Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the South America Division 2 season and we are back again i am very excited i have honestly been waiting for this day to return and I, luckily enough i get accompanied on the first series by the one and only brazilian bowie Hello. How you doing? good now that we get some uh dota back in action do you see the other heroes or are all uh, I only places? don't see the tinies for me vanish death prophet as well like mad king's heroes are just gone from existence I do see the hoodwink and sand king so that's kind of weird huh. Ten seconds. all right so apparently not only myself but your PC is also Five biased towards gorillas remain. so I do I would say they look like the more stacked team you know all of those names are um Pretty no, even Chikala. That uh, I think he started getting popular in the last tour, right? He was uh, standing for, was it Gorilla Sprite? I don't remember which. Team oh, that's a good. Yeah, Chikala. I, he was actually yeah. incredible. Games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that so... I, I forgot about him. Um, I mean, of course, we have to also reconnect with all the players and all the teams and all the worlds, and. Uh, yeah, I think Gorilla Sprite definitely looking a little bit stacked from, uh, even though, you know, they tried, I think, a different route on that team. I think Yodomi tried with a different stack to qualify. And either now or Tao did the same, but failed and went back to Gorilla Sprite because they had the slot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that happens a lot. Uh, but I, I would say, you know, the Gorilla Sprite team looks pretty good. You know, the Mad Kings, I think... I would be... I'm not sure if I am right, but I think they are the ones that actually knocked down the Brazilian stack once, the Kioli Cortejo stack. Could be wrong on that, but uh, RZNT is uh, a super good player on uh, on that team. Everyone else, I think they're kind of new to at least DPC play. Uh, but, you know, always interested to see what the new blood is going to bring. If the last major taught us anything is that... Uh, feels like having these new blood players you know these guys that grind 17 pubs a day is always good seems to you know bring a lot of new energy new ideas let's see if they can me. beat the i mean they're not even old guard on the sprite right but they're definitely Five the more known players seconds. it's actually kind of funny rm uh red monster the position five from mad kings uh that's also the captain used to be the coach of beast ghost and uh, the analyst of oh. beast ghost so Okay. This is his first stint as an actual player. I quickly also saw Adrian's uh, page, and he has uh, he's played before in Inverse and Stratic Gaming, and he has a grand total of nineteen dollars wi in winnings. <laughs> all right, that's I mean this is a good start. All right, as long as he is top six, he will make more than nineteen dollars for sure. Uh, and RZNT also played for Inverse, so they probably played in the same stack. Uh, I think Inverse was one or two tours in the DPC. Uh, I don't remember if they got knocked out. I think they didn't get knocked out in the first tour that they played because of the whole 0800 uh, incident. Not sure if you remember that. But, uh, uh, quickly recap me again. So, I mean... They pretty much Five did uh, a 3 2, two. Um. And so they got eliminated. And Inverse didn't get eliminated because that team got, uh, uh, got removed. So that's an interesting thing, I guess. Now, in terms of the draft here, I I would say things are still looking pretty similar to the to the Major. You know, no Enigma or Wind Ranger because uh, this, this is not OG, but overall... Looks like the, the heroes are popular, remain. are still pretty popular. And kind of weird that the DPC is starting like a day Five before the patch drops, right? I guess that's yeah. the last time we're going to see some of these heroes. Hopefully, because uh, it does get a little bit uh, insane, as we might have uh, noticed. This patch has been going on for far too long. The downside is that they said it's like, uh, I don't know, is this patch like 7.31? Well, uh, whatever it is, it's patch C, and like the next patch is gonna be patch D. So it's like, yay, Five they're gonna tweak stuff. <laughs> Just change everything, please. I beg of you. I mean, maybe the D stands for. Destroy Dota. Direction? 
and uh, they'll see. they'll do some new stuff. I mean, there there were patches that had letters that were big, uh, and patches that were numbers that were small. So, sure, it might not be the biggest patch ever, but I think we'll see like a fair amount of changes because the patch right before last TI was Ten really big, seconds. even though it was also letters. Uh, you know. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, I it, I'm just hoping here because uh, we definitely want something fresh. Uh, start the DPC season off. Um, but yeah, these. I want Pugna delete deleted. Honestly, I th I, I love Pugna as a hero, but this new version it's just so dumb. I I I just want Wraith Act and Pugna totally deleted, and I'll be happy. Yeah, it's weird that Wraith Act is all of a sudden the most broken item that everyone despises, even though no one built it like before at all ever it is <laughs> they just made it five percent you know better and suddenly it's like broken it's funny how those things work actually with uh, pro players but it was also when they introduced the new mechanic to pugna uh that they did the ray effect change and i think those two things combined yeah it's insane. it's insane like the damage and then you have an Ten underlord in your team as well and you're like okay let's yep. stop doing down like it counters nearly five, every burst seven, hero in the game eight. Though, it's, right now, we probably should have a little bit of a discussion over the draft, which, of course, half of, well, the draft I can't see. I do see a tiny Death Prophet, well, I don't see a tiny Death Prophet about an, and Lash being picked on the uh, Radiant side. The nameplates are there, so everyone just needs to mentally visualize that the heroes have been secured. I mean, I see a lot of push, right, coming from my kings, Five, uh, seven, even if this Death Prophet is a support, which I don't think it's going to be the case uh there's like death prophet baron and lashrak doing a load of siege damage but gorillas probably have a lot of burst which pretty much is the counter to heroes like dp and lash so feels like to me whoever wins the laning stage has a big advantage because either mad kings gets bursted really quickly by the level advantage of jeep Ride, or they're not going to have the damage and the sustain of that abaddon the dp will just like uh snowball out of control uh so you know kind of obvious to say that it depends on the laning stage but i think this specifically matters quite a bit uh also bloodseeker right we didn't see that much of uh this hero in the major like a little bit here and there but yeah, it, just, it, it did get picked up occasionally against like big tanky heroes like the uh like Tiny, for instance, Death Prophet as well, uh, because they are very tanky in that regard. And Bloodseeker Ten with the Shard is, in a sense, just like an upgraded version of Lifestealer, Five where you get 2% of pure damage per auto attack, and like he runs like a god and he hits incredibly fast. So you do Lifesteal very quickly. And especially Nine against a Tiny, it's incredibly effective because Tiny always walks around with a massive health pool. Um, yeah, like, th there's definitely not a lot, a lot lack of damage on G Pride. My fear is that this is the type of draft that relies a lot on just killing people. So, Ten if seconds. Mad Kings, for instance, just decides to farm, if they pick something greedy Five now, and the sign is a support, uh, I could see Gorillas struggling if they don't manage to get these early kills, because they cannot siege, they cannot force Roche. They, they're very, very reliant on, on uh, pickoffs. Uh, which could work because they are the better team, at least theoretically. But a lot of times, you know, if uh, if an even team gets a lineup like this and they don't get the ball rolling, it can feel so underwhelming. Yeah, the uh, DP could be so incredibly dangerous as well. Wraith King last pick, so wait, that means it's a DP... Offlane, Lesh right. 4, Tiny, yeah, sorry, uh, Tiny 4, Lesh mid, Wraith King safe lane with your Baron 5 then? Or do you think they're going to swap it around a bit more? Yeah, I think that's going to be it. Uh, they could maybe swap the Lesh track uh, to Offlane, but I don't think that's very popular right now. I'm sure RZ, RZT actually likes to play Lesh off Offlane, but I don't think they get gained that much out of it. This Tiny Lesh track lane is kind of meh, if we can be honest, so... Probably gonna be the DP and Jeep Ride. They need a mid hero, right? So, what do you get here? Uh, 
I feel like they, I would like to see some push. Like even a DK, I wouldn't mind too much. I think they they would benefit from another stun for sure, and uh, that would definitely allow them to siege, but also get more kills. I asked you for the fun of it. I just put a Lishrak picture over the Lishrak thing just so that they have <laughs> visual. I didn't, you know, it's too much work to do the other ones, but I just quickly got Lishrak so that everyone knows. Lesh got picked because they're invisible heroes still. Uh, but yeah, against the Lesh mid, I, uh, what's it going to be? Voker? Okay, Voker. you're going to go for pretty much as solid as you can get. Just has everything that you would possibly want. Team fight is pretty solid on the side of Gorilla's Pride. Pushing power is not great. Roshan, I mean, with the alacrity buff, slightly better. But... Mad Kings' is lineup, I mean, they have a tiny DP, a bad on the Shrak, Wraith King. That is Roche, 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 Roche. Tower, 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 tower. Mad Kings, if they play this correctly, they can have the entire map destroyed at 20 minutes. Yeah, one thing that kind of, you know, even though I like the concept of this Wraith King hero, really hard to burst, right? You have two lives. Uh, it can play greedy. But this is a bad on Wraith King lane. Two melee heroes versus Sand King Hoodwing. So, uh, you know, I was talking about how the lanes are very important for Jeep, right? It feels like a lane that he can lose, even though Abaddon is supposed to be this defensive sort of enabling hero. Um, so they gotta be careful, you know, not play together as much as Abaddon Wraith King, because they're gonna hit a lot of those nets, a lot of burrow strikes, a lot of uh, caustic finales. We'll see how they'll play. Definitely looking forward to seeing what they can bring. I'm quickly going to have to check, what team did Chikala sub into last season again? Hmm. Da -da -da. Faster than you. Oh yeah, it was Gorilla's Pride instead of Luis, who is playing in... I saw him, he's playing in Noping this season with Mandy. Oh, okay. Yeah, everyone is in a different team right now. You also have uh, Mimi playing safe lane in the Curitiba Esports lineup with Mr. Jeans in mid. That's also true, interesting. True. He, he was tweeting about how easy it is to get MMR as a safe laner. He you know he, he was just winning games left and right, apparently. Oh, so we're going to expect some more Brazilians in Division 1 next season then, eh? Okay, Mimi? Uh, uh, no, well, no. We'll, we'll see about that. <laughs> oh, he was yeah. throwing some shade at Costa Bill there. And, uh, he, he was like, oh, now I know why Costa Bill is ranked 7. That's because <laughs> he's playing safe lane. It's so much easier than mid. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think Curitiba is looking pretty stacked. You know, they have Dunyang uh, on support again, which I think is a role that fits him up uh, a lot more. Um, yeah, that, that would be really cool to see. And, you know, there's also the TI qualifiers. We, we already have Beast Coast and Thunder pretty much qualified, which means we could have at three extra uh, SA teams going to, uh, at least, like, attempting to go to TI. So that's pretty hype. If you ask me. Yeah, I mean, uh, SA did amazing at the Mage, which of course we 100% already expected. But uh, still, they did a very solid job. So that was great to see them uh, do the region a solid and really show oh, I, Eero. Th they're That's amazing. The what? Well, yeah. I, it's always, you know, there's always that blemish of China wasn't there. That's always the, sure. the, the, the that, that's one why thing. EG, that's why EG uh, didn't do as well. They they usually do well against Chinese teams. They were known for them to be. Yeah, they had a whole slew of other problems. On e wow. Which was, uh, to be fair, uh, it was surprising. I pegged them to actually win the major. Uh, so that oh, was really? sad. I mean, it's tough, though, because uh, I, I think, you know, people always talk about this, you know, uh, timing of when you peak and stuff like that and uh, I actually did interview crit before the the major and he told me that they actually didn't scream at all because they boot camp for tour two which meant that they traveled back to their places you know uh, with nightfall abed and uh, Jarek's not being from the US meaning that they literally didn't scream at all so kind of unsurprising that a uh, team that didn't scream ended up you know not doing as well now, looks like we might have a level 1 fight here. A uh, little bit of uh, touch and go on the other side of the river right now. The battle bit of a wrong direction. They're all over the place. 
and <laughs> the bounties will go in favor of Mad Kings. All right. They do split up pretty nicely there. Uh, looks like this ward here from G Pride was not scouted, so that's pretty good. We'll uh, allow the Tiny to be scouted if he tries to rotate towards the mid lane. It's a Death Prophet Tiny lane. I actually, the, the Tiny position 4 is still something I always love to see. It, the playmaking potential, the save possibilities as well on the hero are uh, always remarkable in that regard. Does not most of the time yeah. look to be a good laner though. Yeah, I didn't like the way he used the toss there just for her ass, and then he didn't secure the range creep because of it. So, not the biggest fan of the way Pablo started the lane. But, you know, can always... Uh, I guess he was expecting the GT to use the farm to get it, but she maybe it wasn't cool now. Uh, this mid lane, though, I think this is going to be really good. Like, Tao is even... Uh, playing plus Wax so far, because uh, Latrax, his sorry, cast points are pretty bad. Yeah, sorry. Uh, his cast points are really bad. It just allows Invoker to play way greedier than he usually does. Yeah, but my guy. Exort is superior to Wax all day, every day. But nonetheless, you're playing against a Lash. I would assume EMP is pretty useful there. And you're playing against a Wraith King. Which, True. for obvious reasons, should be... And Spirit Vessel should be pretty good to have on your team. But did we talk about how many stuns they have, my dude? I want to see some sun strikes. I, want to I mean, see that some must be the main reason. Anger. Yeah, yeah. Good burrow, good bushwhack, uh, fiend's grip, obviously, or the nightmare. No, definitely. Even have a some rupture, nice you could say, is a is a good uh, sun strike setup. Though mid is not looking too great for tower right now. Uh, look at that lash go! Fifteen last hits already. That is pretty nutty. And b grabbing both the water runes as well. Full HP, full mana, easy peasy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, you know this build uh, with no edict until you're like level seven is pretty good. Just shove the wave, invoker. I mean, with regardless of the build you you go for, you just don't shove the wave as fast. So it allows him to control the runes, keep up that mana region. Pretty. Uh, I like the way Jackie is playing so far. Yeah, Tao. Definitely uh, struggling a little bit. You get 42 for the Forge Spirits that early on. That's a lot of gold that you get every time. And it dies in no time because you only have two points in Quas. It's got what? How much HP? 400 HP. 400? Yeah. Not for you. I mean, he is level four though, so it, regardless, like it, it could only be level two at this point. Don't don't blame the exhort on the HP of that uh, Void Spirit. No, but you would otherwise not have Void Spirit, a uh, Void Spirit. So, you know. That, yeah, 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 that's true. And it actually doesn't have any magical resistance, which is kind of funny because if you have like, I think it's the Lycan Wolf has 75% magic resistance or some ridiculous nonsense. Eidlons have like 59%. Like they don't it's die. It's a really sad summon early on. Oh, is it pretty low here? But now won't have the, the bottom guts. lane. Bushwhack in. Adrian, the Wraith King in trouble. Sunstrike comes out. And it's actually the Hoodwing picking up that first blood. Denying it for his mid laner. That is a report and a half. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that Wraith King, I, I think it was a good pick, but it was bound to suffer in lane a little bit. They do get first blood, which is really good. Invoker would have loved to actually pick that up, but still really good that uh, G Pride finds first blood this game. Look at the difference in last hits in mid. Oh my lord, I've rarely seen that big of a gap. No. That's crazy, actually. Uh, you know, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this Jackie guy is pretty new. So, the fact he's... I mean, sure, the laning stage is probably a little bit on Last Track's favor. But, uh, kind of, like, I don't think this is ever supposed to happen. Like, this is a total outplay. Yeah, just completely dominating that mid lane top. In the meantime, Arzen versus now. It does really get scary for Arzen until the Bloodseeker gets his level 6. And then even 
even then, it's not really that dangerous, because if you just get your uh, spirit siphons off in time, you should be able to survive. Well, Tao does get the cold snap here, preventing the split earth. Flash Strike was out of mana also, so... Will be just fine. Top lane! Now is looking... Oh, Spirit Siphon, but it gets broken immediately, and he doesn't have one for 20 seconds. That's a little bit problematic, luckily enough. Healing Salve is always at the ready. Mm -hmm. ZXCA goes for a pretty uh, deep ward here, but he actually gets scouted by this other ward, so I would assume uh, RM2 eventually take that out. He even has a sentry already purchased. Top lane is such a... <laughs> <laughs> They're really bullying for now, uh, but he actually has pretty decent CS regardless. So that's quite impressive. Well, towards mid, rotation coming in, Yodomi is here. Can they get something going? Sunstrike maybe, he's draining all of his mana. Sunstrike will slightly connect, doesn't really do that much damage because oh, RM Lord. is there as well with the Photic Shield Tower. Can he get away? The Bushwhack done nice onto two. Great turnaround play. Lesh is almost dead. One more hit, but he's got that haste rune as well. And we'll... Consider charging up the high ground, which would be a little bit too risky. While well, in the meantime, Yodomi is being chased out by Pablo. Nightmare oh, and... Is Jakala that though? Do they have a center for this guy? Oh, they're fighting in every single freaking area on the map. Top lane as well. They're busy. Everyone is fighting. No one's dying. No! Oh, except yeah. for Chikala. Yeah, they, they actually had two sentries, so there was this like very small... Oh, Lush also dies. There was this very small area where Shikala was immune, but he didn't know, so... Walks to the uh, wrong spot, unfortunately. For some reason, the right sentry... D okay, now it shows. I don't know why it didn't show me earlier, but now it does. Okay, yeah, I was looking at that area. Okay. I wanted to know what you were talking about, Wraith King does not actually have an extra point for reincarnation. Oh. But they don't know that, luckily enough. And Yachi. Oh, rotation. ETP's in again. He just oh died in that God. area. No, this is so big. No TP for the poor Sand King. Oh, Chikala. You now it does give free farm time for Tao to catch up in mid, which is a big plus. Because he was definitely, uh, well, we saw previously struggling, but right now he's looking... Pretty okay on the recovery. True. But that's a huge blow to Sanking because he was he was the highest CS by a decent margin. Now he dies twice. Uh, that blink dagger that was looking quite promising. Now he's pretty much back to square zero. Uh, what do we have here? Rotation from Pablo. Uh, time for the room. Dex says making some ancient stacks for the Sanking to possibly nice toss back, but. Dao, can they even kill him off? Split Earth, not gonna connect. Oh, that whiff right now. Pablo slowed down heavily as well. Yodomi's here. He's got that double damage, Bane. And with that right click, we'll steal the kill away. Stop stealing kills away from Tao, guys. Come on. <laughs> kind of interesting. I think he was relying, uh, like, usually you see three points in Lightning Storm. That's usually the build that I see for most of the Shreks. Uh, he went for the third point split up, so he was relying on the stun, uh, on the toss uh, for the stun. But he went Lightning Storm first, and that's why he actually missed the split up. So, unfortunate there. Kind of a weird mistake. Still though, Jackie having a really good game. Invoker slowly recovering. And no real uh, movements from now. This Rupture yet to be used, I think. Yeah, DP is not the best in that regard to try and take him down, especially not with three Spirit Siphon charges. They are smoked up and heading towards top, but a good scan call finds out the move, and they will fall back quickly before they get caught. Oh, Tell me. Smoke breaks. There's no ward there, though. Pablo does spot out now, but he won't go for the kill. Or maybe there's... Nah, the, the rest is too far away. Gachi? Actually, he still smoked up. But now he's just hiding behind the trees. Though, this is a lot of time where the Bloodseek, of course, is not farming. Yeah. I'm surprised that Mad Kings is playing this aggressive. Like, usually from teams like this one that actually qualify, you don't expect these aggressive moves. Uh, okay, Argenti gets ruptured. 
Okay, he does have really a weird fight. Feels nearby, but he's gonna get silenced up, and that's a big problem. He can't get the spirit siphons off. Nice two man split earth coming out. But they need to back off right now. Epicenter comes out from Chikala. He does not have the range, though. Only level one burst strike, and it was on cooldown. No blink dagger just yet. So the Epi kind of wasted in the situation. But yeah, they got really aggressive there on Mad Kings early on in the game. Yeah, that was a little bit too much. And usually, I, I don't think that would matter that much, but they're going to lose mid. Tao just use all of that timing perfectly, and they also lose our boy Chakala top. So, I guess they do recover a little bit for Mad Kings, but uh, I'm getting scared. This Tao guy is quickly recovering in this Leshrac. He had such a good start, but he's not really connecting as well as he would like to. Uh, this is kind of the plus of the Invoker uh, Quas Exert compared to Wex, is that once the laning stage is over, your farming is way faster on Exert than on Wex. Like, it's incomparable yeah. how much faster you farm. The farm and the, the Siege, right, just by using Alecri there on the Catapult, he took the, the mid tower by himself. That was huge. Usually, you would expect LS Shrek to already take top and probably even collapse in towards mid with the second catapult, but oh, LS Shrek... No. <laughs> that was a filthy little combo. Tiny airlines coming through. Les just got tossed up on the Bloodseeker and... Well, it's really rough to get away if the Lash is on top of you. Mm -hmm. Alright, so... Uh, kind of crazy that, like, I was talking about how G-Pride had the kill uh, draft but it's like mad kings running around everywhere trying to get kills they uh they're sure trying the kill score doesn't really reflect how much they try to go for these pick offs Lexa almost has a full spirit vessel done look at that net worth on the hoodwink he is absolutely farmed out of his mind yeah the first blood and uh, the other kill definitely allowing him to grow quite a bit yeah, we did talk about Spirit Vessel being huge this game. Rave King, DP, uh, everyone. They do have the shield to kind of combat that a little bit, but still will be effective if he uses it properly. Smoke on this uh, blank dagger that the Sand King is uh, getting alongside the Fiend's Grip of the Bane. Let's see if they can stop this top tower push. That's all uh, a, a little bit dangerous they do have the two top net worths on the side of mad kings but they definitely need to start taking buildings down in this game because it could otherwise get very oh. scary nice toss up pablo he's got that range epi burrow coming in from chicala two-man catch uh, arson's just gonna get bursted down pablo needs to run away rm he's gonna go for the tp sunstrike hits the mark tau gets the connection fiends grip onto rm yabana will be a third one down and they still have not taken that tier one tower top and also Chikala, that burrow was really not necessary. <laughs> yeah, that was a really weird play because uh, sure you get the toss, you kill the XCA, but they could have just gotten the tower and uh, lost none of it. Instead, they overextend like the toss just allows Jipri to be in position to hit the death fight, but if they get the Bloodseeker, could be a decent uh, trade back. Yeah, that's uh, not really what they wanted on the side of Cheap Ride. These two cores are kind of something that you want to dodge. Wraith King's going to go for the Desso, afterwards Blink at that point. You know, anyone gets close, he gets he can easily one-shot the Bane at that point. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that was a lot of time bought for Adrian. He didn't have the, the greatest laning stage, died first blood, but he is recovering pretty well. And, oh, yeah, they find a... Uh, Little yet dome in the mid lane. Yeah, so we... like the cores that actually matter on the side of Mad Kings are growing very rapidly. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't expect such a good start for Mad Kings. They sure some connections were not there, but they're looking really good. Yeah, the, the, it's a little bit rough around the edges, but they are making some. I mean, the plays make sense because they need to start yeah. pushing towers down. It's just. You know, they, they usually don't have one of those two cores with them, and especially the Lesh you really need to have with you if you're going to go for any kind of pushing strategy right now, because he's the one that deals literally all the damage in the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the execution is not crisp, but uh, 
I, I expect the Jeep Ride to be much better. So the fact that, you know, this is an even game and that this Wraith King and Lash are as farmers as they are is a pretty good sign. Although, if this game goes too late, this Invoker, man, this hero, when you play him, Quas, uh, Exhort Quas is a menace. So they're gonna have to focus a lot of their damage on him. And there's mostly right now, smoke and smoke, you break it. The Domi's already caught. Texas gonna be another. The two supports are the first one taken down, and that means that they need to disengage. Jigala was considering the Epi Burrow play, but. They just kind of need to disengage from the fight because everyone, I mean, it's a bit too rough to re-initiate in that, Zexa. Does he get away? Run, Piggy, run. <laughs> oh, that's an easy counter ward to boot. And Adrian, can he get the Wraith Fire Blast in? Yes, and a big, fat, juicy crit. Ooh, the stun comes out. Pablo? Body will lock. No mana on the tiny, unfortunately. But this should be a kill, right? Okay, Eventually. this is a lot of space created. Eventually. This is so much space created. It's not even that bad if he died. Like, it cost them forever on, like, three heroes to hunt him down. Yeah, very true. Kind of unfortunate that Hoodwink died uh, two times in a row, though, because the Vessel's been ready for a while, as you pointed out a couple of minutes ago. But he didn't really get any charges, so the fights that Jeep are taking have not been the greatest. So, um, they're waiting for a better pickup. Oh, oh nice Chikala. Here. Oh, that's a nice catch. RM coming in from the side under the fog and completely surprises uh, Chikala there with a quick kill and into the Roche pit they go. We did mention, of course, in the draft, especially now that Desu is done, they have an incredible Roche lineup. Every single hero on their side, except for Tiny, is amazing at taking Roche. Yeah, I mean, uh, they actually had a ward, so I'm surprised that Chikala got uh, surprised there, because he had vision of the Abaddon going around. I but, think the ward uh, was a little bit, to, wasn't it a bit to the left, so he just... I think it was pretty close to where the Radiant one is, uh, so like he... I think it was a little I bit mean, to the left and like behind that tree. But I. Oh, okay. So Maybe so it like just the... did not give enough vision in that area. Okay. Okay. Still At least that that's what here. I think I saw. But I I could also be blind. It tends to happen. I mean, your PC is not showing some heroes, man. So. Yeah, that's uh, true. I have too. a lot of Rickies on the map during the drafting stage. <laughs> Sneaky bugger. Yep. Yep. I, miss I mean, this invoker though, super greedy build, going for the Travels Midas, so considering it's only a 2k goal lead, one could say that's still like pretty good. G Pride's not mad uh, of being 2k goal lead behind. Okay. Got Lynch, Gala's gonna get caught, Yudomi, he TP's right on the worst possible spot to be in, Zexa needs to disengage as well, they find themselves two kills, big fat juicy crit comes in. And they know Zexa's hiding in the trees, but of course you're chasing after a scurrying hoodwink, which is really rough to catch up to. Yeah, pretty... I, I really don't like this move. They know they have this uh, Travels Midas Invoker that doesn't want to join any fight, so... Setting up against an Aegis when you could just easily give up the tier 2 is a little odd. This is gonna, like, allow them to go to tier 3 here. Yeah, and th again, their pushing power is pretty phenomenal. Look at everything dropping in no time. The creep wave did get cut. Tornado EMP comes out. The EMP doesn't do too much against Adrian. And they should still be able to secure at least the range racks, I think. Though, now he's going in for the back line. Epicenter gets wrapped up as well. The Sunstrike comes in. Nice, Epiburo. They blow up the Wraith King's first life. Fiends grip onto Yachi on the high ground. He still has that Aegis, though. Chikala is in trouble. He can't get himself out of there. The Meat Bull gets dropped. Out with the wall as well needs to disengage, but they're just hunting for more. They don't care at all. Now does not have his BKB anymore, and he's in a little or bit of TP. trouble. Or TP or mana. <laughs> <laughs> all right, he does juke them at the end. Oh, yeah, I mean, all Zexa. things considered, this is not terrible, but I think they might lose barracks here, anyways. There's way too much gas uh, in this Mekings tanks. The buyback is not gonna help at all. Well, at least they keep the melee racks of live for the time being. DP comes. Yeah, you don't meet us. <laughs> don't DP there. Yeah, this is such a 
an uncharacteristic showing from Chikala. I think uh, in tour 2 he had a really good showing, but some pretty bad decisions from him. Like he was the one that actually set up the whole, uh, this whole chaos that started with the tier 2 falling. I'm pretty sure that Mad Kings would have just went for other tier 2 towers if uh, there was no defense from Jeep Ride, but because he dies like that, it just snowballs this uh, the death ball from Mad Kings pretty much. So a really good uh, use of the power spike of the Aegis. Adrian now has that blink dagger. They're only going to be ready to fight on Jeep Ride once the BKB is ready for Invoker. So that's probably like four or five minutes away unless uh, he gets a couple of kills. Yeah, the big problem is the f the fights are just so long. They're oh, so extended. I mean, I just jinxed this Invoker. Yep, Tao is going to get caught. And well, the disarm from the creep is annoying. Another disarm comes out, but the Yules from Arzen will make sure Tao can't disengage. Adrian shuts him down. I mean, on the side, they will find the kill onto the Lesh's Ages at the very least. Chikala needs to get away, but he's going to get silenced up. Great Fire Blast as well. Blown up. RM gets the kill with the Euphotic Shield. And they lose another duo on the side of G Pride. It's not looking that good for the Dire side. And it's, I mean,. To be fair, it is hard against Mad Kings. Like, they have an Abaddon, which is pretty much a hero with two lives. You have a Wraith King with two lives. You've got a DP who's got the Yule Scepter Hood of Defiance and, like, a gazillion healing. And even the Lash has an Eternal Shroud and Yules. Like, they are so freaking tanky. That's what I said, dude. These kill drafts, you know, if you don't get a lot of kills, it just looks. Like oh and, no! Uh, now is dead. I think that's just CG. Yep. There's nothing that they like. They're not even that far behind in terms of net worth, but they just can't do anything. Chikali, epicenter burrow. Yeah, you could kill off, you know, the the abaddon's borrowed time or maybe the reincarnation, but then you still have to deal with a full HP abaddon and a wraith king. So in a sense, you just. It's really hard. You need to be able to survive lengthy fights, and right now they have no chance. Yeah, I feel like for this Invoker to play as greedy as he did, you just needed a Sanctum to have a better game. So uh, I would say it's probably not the best read from Tao going for a build like this when the Sanctum is struggling. Because if he's having a good game and you know they can actually execute plays, sure you can try and go for that play, uh, for this Midas, just Sunstrike and, and help your allies, but they just lack damage to do anything. Oh, oh. Epicenter coming tiny out. Here. Tiny would be a nice one. The Yules gets thrown. Nice snipe in as well. Chikala, however, will pay the price. Adrian gets a double kill. Look at that Wraith King. No fear. Blink, Armlet, Dasso, BKB. He's got everything his little heart desires. I honestly feel like this is just game because you don't have Epi now and you have two lives on this Wraith King. Uh, I, I really... What is happening? Why are they defending the tier 2? I, I think they're just yeah. kind of internally GG out. I'm actually baffled at the fact that they're still playing. <laughs> like right now, they've been just being ran over fight after fight after fight. Yeah... I mean, uh, that's really cool, though. This Mad King is, you know, I'm all for new blood, and uh, these guys are looking Bring it back. Very good. Okay. Going in, Chikala gets stunned on Tiachi, but look at he just doesn't really take that much damage. Turn a shout pop, Yule Scepter, your meeple does nothing. They do throw everything on Yachi. The Lesh might finally die, now gets the kill. Charges back, Sunstrike in as well. Arzen's very low, but he does have himself super siphons to use. And Chikala just gets blown to smithereens. They keep their buildings alive for a couple of seconds longer, but Sexa is found out as well. And Adrian, just, and like this guy is just chunking like crazy. Pablo with the toss back. More kills for Adrian. This Wraith King is tearing oh. them apart. Does accidentally take the nightmare off. But continues his stride, and now no more. There's the GG, and yeah, I mean, new blood in the scene, and honestly, they looked incredible. As their draft was just pure go, 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 and you see a lot of teams.
that have like this kind of draft. I mean, we did of course talk about the fact in the early game they tried a little bit uh, already, but it did not pay off that well for them. But you see a lot of teams that build a super push draft and then completely forget to push, or teams that get like a, a massive split push draft and forget to split push. Mad Kings, from the get go, their plan was push, push, push. We have the advantage for you know the entire early to early mid game so they really abuse that fact yeah definitely and i mean let, let me remind you again that tau rank 29 tau got totally obliterated by you know the this mad king guy the jackie tokyo maybe trying to surf on the toronto tokyo brand here just totally destroyed uh I don't think that matchup should ever go like that. So super impressive. Feels like all of the cores really know what they're doing. Uh, you know, Cruiser Sprite are gonna have to step it up. They have the brand name, but they, they're not looking uh, really hot right now. Uh, Chikala, I think he actually played a lot of Sand King in Tour 2. So it's not like this hero wasn't really his comfort zone, but uh, he just didn't have a good game. Uh, did not look uh, the greatest for them, but honestly, like, I am happy for this. I applaud this. I want to see more of this because, you know, it's always a little bit touch and go when you see new teams coming into the DPC. Like, how good are they? Did they deserve to make it here? You know, did they get lucky? Blah, blah, blah. Mad Kings definitely look like they, they deserved. Like, that first game was insane. I'm looking forward to seeing what they can bring this season. And hopefully they could be that one big surprise in uh, the region as well. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see for game two if they can continue the stride. Or if Gorilla's Pride will finally start waking up and uh, bringing the heat to the Mad Kings. We'll be back after the break for game number two. Be right back.